Let's finish our introduction to the Soloswan model by discussing briefly how we can estimate its parameters. Uh, I will add a few policy recommendations at the end based uh, on everything we have seen so far and on the, these empirical considerations. So to add some structure to the, the problem, a usual shape that is uh, assumed in the literature is a cup de glass production function. Here we have it with uh, labor enhancing technology A. So we are already familiar with that form. Uh, to estimate this, uh, this is highly unlinear. So what people usually do is just take logs on each side. So if I do that, then I would uh, uh, obtain this, uh, this form. So all I have to do is transform all of my variables. And then I would essentially estimate log y equals alpha log k plus one minus alpha log l plus one minus alpha log a, but of course uh, I don't have a. This would be in a sense what uh, what is left to us to to um, for my model to make sense. Uh, one thing that is very often done is to uh, use uh, variables in per capita terms. So all you can do is simply start by dividing by l everywhere. But uh, we could also just subtract by L and L. Uh, we, it gives us the same uh, model. And in the end, you see that the form is very simple. So we get LN output per capita equals alpha uh, LN K, uh, capital per capita plus one minus alpha LN of A if uh, we assume labor enhancing technology. Now, to estimate technological growth over some period t, we would do the following. So uh, we would have, so I would represent some different countries, states, regions, and t would be uh, the time period at which we want to estimate it. And we would estimate this uh, formula here. So delta log of yit, so the change between log yit plus one and yit would be equal to SR, and SR here, we're going to call this the solo residual. So that's, uh, in a sense, the constant term in the equation that we further have to interpret once we have uh, done our estimation, plus alpha times delta ln kit, plus some, um, some uh, error term that's, uh, uh, that's specific to each uh, observation. So this, uh, not to go into too much detail about linear regression, I will assume that you know them already. Otherwise, you will learn them uh, quite soon, hopefully. Um, and here, yeah, so alpha, again, uh, captures the importance of capital in uh, per capita growth in explaining output per capita growth. And as we uh, can remember too, so it measures essentially the, the role played by capital in production. Uh, so uh, once I have estimated this, uh, what I get is some value for SR, so first the slow residual, and some value for alpha. How do I interpret what I got from my constant term here? Well, it depends what I assume the technology was. So uh, let's just go back quickly here. So you see that here I assume that this is how my technology entered the formula, 1 minus alpha log of A. So if this is SR, so or so what I would have to do is divide it by one minus alpha and then take the exponent and I would get A. So in a sense, if I assume a labor enhancing technology, that's what I do. I divide my uh, solar residual by one minus alpha. If I don't assume this, if I assume that it's a general purpose technology or what we call total, total factor productivity or TFP, then I just leave it as it is and may take an exponent then to, uh, to go back to my or original cup du glass. And if I assume a capital enhancing technology, so I divide it by alpha. So you see that uh, this, uh, in a sense, it, it's not, uh, it, we're not assuming much by saying we have a capital enhancing technology or labor enhancing technology. Uh, because uh, at the end of the day, it's a matter of how I interpret the result I get. 
One of the earliest and most famous of such exercises was done by Robert Solow in 1957. So he used US data between 1909 and 1949 to test the influence of technology and capital per man hour on output per man hour. Uh, so what's uh, amazing is first of all that the US already had very good data back then that allowed for uh, such project. And uh, so the fact that he really divides by man hour, so the hours worked by men because men were uh, dominating the labor market back then, so things were would be different now. Uh, so he does two he does it in two steps. I'm going to uh, explain uh, well each step. So he uh, first he wants to estimate a TFP technology, so uh, a neutral uh, technology with a T here, um, and uh, obviously we don't observe a. But here's uh, the trick he's using. So uh, um, he's, he's going to estimate uh, this formula here, yt equals at kt to the alpha t. So he even allows for uh, alpha to be time specific. Uh, and then, so imagine you would want to uh, differentiate yt with respect to time. You would uh, use a product rule because uh, he allows for AT and KT to, to change, basically. So you would write uh, DYT DT equals the derivative of this object uh, with respect to AT multiplied by the derivative AT DT, and then the same thing for KT. So here, this is exactly the same thing, but uh, instead of time derivative, we have uh, discrete changes, but the logic is the same. So delta yt equals to at, and then the derivative of this part with respect, respect to kt, so uh, alpha t, kt, alpha t minus 1, and then delta kt, plus the same thing, but now we uh, take the difference of at, so uh, kt, alpha t, delta at. So it really looks like the just uh, uh, differencing a product, but it's uh, he uses uh, discrete changes instead. And then note what he, uh, he does. So you can divide by kt here and multiply by kt here, divide by at here and multiply by at in front, and you get this form, where uh, here, if you noticed, this at kt alpha t is yt, and this is yt as well. So uh, then the only step that we have to do is divide by yt everywhere and uh, isolate delta at over at. So that's what we do here. And then we get a sense of the growth of technology, so the growth of uh, the solo residual uh, at every period. And then uh, obviously we don't know what the... Uh, oh yeah, so one, one thing to note is that uh, we still have uh, this alpha t that we don't know uh, what it is. So we uh, so what Solo does is he uses outside data, and alpha t is an estimate of the share of property in income. So the share of of, uh, of income to capital in the total national income at time t. So uh, even back there it was around zero point three three four on average. So he could have uh, used the 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 this, it's changed too, but it's very uh, it almost doesn't change. So so it's fine. And then uh, what we can do is imagine okay, imagine that techn the the technology quote unquote level is one in uh, nineteen oh nine, and then to get the technology in uh, nineteen ten, then it's the technology of, it's one plus the growth rate in, in nineteen ten. And then uh, uh, on and on and on, and you can find out what is the technology at each year. So that's his first step: is to basically compute technologies, uh, technological improvements in each year. And then uh, what he does is he says, "Okay, now that I have technology, I can remove the effect of technology on output." So imagine what output would be if technology had stayed the same. So uh, if you look at it here, the output is technology multiplied by uh, 
capital to the alpha t. So if we divide by technology every year, then we just have a simple function of capital. So then we, he, he wants to estimate what is the impact of capital per man hour on this uh, output per man hour divided by technology every year. Uh, by the way, so he removes uh, the years from uh, 1943 to 1949 uh, uh, nine because they kind of don't fit well his curve. So that's dubious, but you know, he, that's what he does. That's what he does. And he, he, uh, he obtains, um, so uh, what, what we're looking at is uh, beta 1, beta 0, we don't care because it's a, it, it, it's a function of the starting point. So beta 1 hat is 0 0.353, which is quite, uh, quite close to what we already had here, 0 0.34. Um, so then, uh, well, that's his exercise. So, in a sense, it's confirming what we already uh, guess. But his point, the deep point, and why it's a famous article, is the following. So, over the total period, 1909 to 1949, uh, so output per man hour, y, uh, small y, has increased by roughly 100%, so 104%. But Capital per man hour, small k, has increased by only 31%. So it means that uh, um, basically the contribution of capital to the growth of y uh, is simply the growth of, of capital multiplied by the coefficient we have just computed, alpha. So it's uh, 0 0.353 multiplied by 31%, so 11%. So if we uh, if we didn't have the technology growth, then the output should have just grown by uh, eleven percent. But it's grown by a hundred percent. So it means that, in a sense, uh, almost everything else, so uh, about eighty eight percent of growth of output per man hour, is actually un unexplained by capital. So it's purely explained by this solar residual, this uh, TFP uh, growth. So it's a big problem for macroeconomics. What this means is there's actually 88% of what we matter to understand why, uh, why output grows that we really can't observe, that we don't uh, understand. And if you compare that to say uh, in, in physics where they say that, oh, maybe 85% of all matters is dark matter. We don't know what it is. Well, this is 88%. So uh, it's in the same kind of uh, level of uncertainty. So obviously, since that time, it's been a, a huge uh, research agenda to try to understand what drives the solar residual, what uh, what it's made of, and uh, how do we... Uh, so how, how do we understand why some countries grow faster than others. Um, but it's so, so far, it's uh, totally an open-ended question since, and uh, it's, a, yeah, it's, it's an active field. All right, so this was uh, Solo's um, exercise. Now I'm just going to conclude this uh, section on the Solo Swan model uh, by, uh, with some policy recommendation we can garner from uh, this work and from everything we've learned so far. So the first policy recommendation has to do with capital accumulation. So uh, if capital level is low or savings rate are too low, uh, then it may be a good idea to uh, have policies to help reach uh, optimal balance growth path by either encouraging domestic savings or possibly this is outside the model, but uh, we know that uh, bringing outside capital, such uh, as Germany or Japan after World War II or China in recent years, may be extremely helpful in uh, in generating growth. Uh, also, uh, we just saw how uh, science and technology are, play a huge role, uh, even though the Solo Swan model doesn't have an explicit mechanism. So, uh, empirically, capital accumulation uh, as basically a small role or a accompanying role and uh, technical progress uh, and the way to generate it uh, has a huge importance in the long run. So that's it for a solo swan model. 
Uh, I hope uh, this was uh, helpful and uh, clear.